you're not using your Samsung to its full potential. That is because you don't know about these five hidden Samsung features that I'm gonna show you in today's video. You need to be using your Samsung better. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech With Benefits. You're of course here with Daniel. I'm on a bit of a mission with this channel and that's to get you using your Samsung a lot better than what you currently are. Hopefully this video can help you because today I'm showing you five Samsung features that you probably aren't using. Number one, it's a feature inside Samsung's gallery and it's called shared albums. Now obviously we know about the opportunity to share like Google Photos albums and OneDrive links. But shared albums, especially if you're in the Samsung ecosystem and you have friends and family that are as well, gives you so much more. What shared albums can do is when you invite Samsung accounts to this particular album you've created, allows you and them to both load photos into this album. It's really great and it's hidden in like this part of the gallery that not a lot of people sort of know is there. So if you go into the little hamburger menu in the bottom right corner, you'll see the shared albums menu item. When you click on that, if you've actually created some, you'll see the shared albums there. But if you haven't, then you need to start creating. So you create your shared album and you can invite up to 100 people to be a part of this shared album. And you can also just generate an invite link for anyone that you can send to to then join it as well. Of course, they would need a Samsung account to access. You just start uploading photos from your storage and your other albums into this shared album and it uploads it to this album remotely. So it's a cloud album, basically. The other person or the other people that are part of this album too, they can also add photos into this album. It's great if you've got like a family, like grandparents and, and, and your wife as well, or your partner, and you want to add photos of your kids into one album. And then everyone can sort of join in with the, the happiness that these kids can provide. There's things you can do, like you can sort the album view into like ascending or descending to do a date or photo taken date, anything that sort of stuff. That's the nitty gritty. Ultimately, you just need to know this feature exists and you need to know that you can invite people using a Samsung account to actually add into it. What's really cool is you can create a link for other people to view the album. So it will sort of generate this hosting link. You share that link to someone and then they can view it in a browser. It's really clever and gives people who maybe aren't in the Samsung ecosystem the opportunity to view these photos as well. Number two, cloud storage in your My Files app. So in My Files, not only do you have access to all your internal storage documents and downloads and photos and videos, but you can also in here under the cloud section of the My Files, see OneDrive and Google Drive. When you link up and sync these drives into your My Files, it will show you the folder and file structure from those cloud drives in your My Files app, which is great, meaning you can access the documents from those drives directly from My Files without needing to go to the individual apps that they belong to. So you can see there it's got Google Drive and OneDrive that you can access. There's also a network storage option, which you can see just underneath that. And there's three different styles of network storage that you can add. FTP server, an SFTP server, and a network drive. And you can see the different variants listed there. I haven't got any network storage myself to be able to add, so I can't demonstrate specifically, but follow the prompts and the guides that it gives you on screen and you'll be good to go. Number three, Bixby Vision. Yes, I know it's Bixby and I know it gets ridiculed, but there is some actually quite useful stuff inside Bixby Vision. There are two ways if you have a phone with an S Pen that you can access Bixby Vision. One of them is the air command menu and you can go to Bixby Vision that way. I did showcase that through my S Pen video uh, earlier on, but through the camera, you'll see Bixby Vision way up at the top left corner in the more tab. It's very, very hidden. Samsung almost don't want you to know about it. Bixby Vision has a couple of different things in it. It used to be a lot more extensive, but as other features from it started trickling their way into Google, Samsung kind of reduced its capability. So there's four different things that you can do with Bixby Vision. The first is translate text. So you hover it over a body of text and it will work to translate it for you. Simple enough. The good thing with auto text translation is it automatically will detect the language that it's looking at and translate it to your target language, which you've set. Depending on the country you're in, it might be English, which is where I am, I use. And it doesn't just have to be text that's, you know, on a digital sheet. You can actually scan things in real life and it'll overlay it as well. It's been doing it for a while before any of the Google Lens was doing it as well, which I think a lot of people don't give enough credit to Bixby for because it was it was the OG, I think. There's Bixby Vision Discover, which is basically like what Google's new circle to search is, except using the camera, you look at something and it will find something similar on Pinterest. 
So it's a Pinterest backed service. So it's not using Google's search engine. It's using Pinterest library of images and using Pinterest library of images, it will show you similar things that you're pointing the camera at. The last one is Bixby wine. I had a fun drinking game that I started with Bixby wine. I lined up eight bottles of wine on a table. And if Bixby vision couldn't identify that bottle of wine, you had to pour yourself a glass and scull it. To be fair, I was quite lucky. Whenever it was my turn, it identified the wine. And to be fair to Bixby Vision, it actually can identify quite a number of wines. The advantage with it too is when you scan the wine, it will show you sort of foods that it pairs well with and also gives you some information about the wine itself. It's a really nice service and part of the Bixby Vision package. Number four is to do with edge panels. But not the whole edge panel suite, there is a lot that edge panels can do, but more specifically the compass and the ruler and that sort of gadgety part of the edge panels. With the compass, you do have to calibrate it, but once it is, it does become quite useful. But I find the ruler to be actually really useful because it basically just turns the side of your phone into a ruler. And if there's anything that's sort of small that you want to measure, you can use and measure it up against the side of the phone to do so. It's a very small one. There's obviously a lot more with edge panels that you'll probably get more features out of. Things like Tasks Edge or things like People Edge or Apps Edge. They're probably the main crux of edge panel, but this shouldn't be ruled out. It does give you a lot of flexibility and can do things that you maybe didn't think that your phone could do. And the last one, I'm gonna give you a two for one deal here. Inside Samsung internet, and yes, I use Samsung internet, is two features that you need to be using. The first is video assistant. With video assistant, any video that's embedded into a website, you will actually be able to expand out into Samsung's video player. And the advantage of that is you then have the option to use Samsung video player's features, like swiping on the right to launch the volume, make it a bit louder, or dragging the scroll wheel left and right just on the screen it can do all of those sort of things and you can do you can lock the screen there's a lot of different things you can do and samsung video player enables that through samsung internet's video assistant turn it on in the settings parallel to that is background play background play is another really cool one because if you're watching a video on a website that doesn't normally allow background play of videos you can then just swipe out of the internet browser whilst the video is playing and the audio from that video will continue and how many photos and videos it's captured. That can be really great if you've got like a video of tracks for a night out and you just want the audio and you don't want to have to keep the screen on. Turn background play on and as soon as you swipe out of that browser, that will continue to play in the background as advertised. And I'll just throw in a bonus one just because I have it here on my list. It's Routines Plus. Now I'm not going to go through everything in Routines Plus. It's just an extension through GoodLock that allows your modes and routines app to have more capabilities. You can create touch macros, you can control things a bit more finitely. What I will suggest is go in here and have a bit of a play around yourself, but just know that this is here. It's part of the GoodLock module, so go into GoodLock and find Routines Plus and download it. And then once you're in here, you can control a bit more, a bit more minutely than what you could in the normal modes and routines part of the phone. That is my five things plus one extra and a double up that you, I think you'll get more out of your Samsung phone. So let me know which one you didn't know about. If you knew about them all, great. If you didn't know about any of them, also great, because now you do. Thanks for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you're enjoying what I'm doing here. Hit that button below. Also like this video. Come and find me and hang out with me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X and also Instagram. I'll see you in the next one. Yoo!